My name is Patrick Silvestro at Zorcom USA and I'm going to take you over a brief tutorial of the security module in Complete PBX version 5. Uh, the security module can be found in Admin, Security, and is comprised of three modules, Firewall, Intrusion Detection, and Weak Passwords. We'll start with the Firewall. As you can see here, the module is comprised of four uh, sections, General, Rules, Services, and Whitelist. Uh, general enables uh, and disables the firewall service itself. Uh, rules are rule sets based upon the service. Uh, you have three options here. The source, which is the source IP. The destination, which is the destination IP. And what action we will take, of which there's three actions. Accept, reject, and drop. Uh, please note that of reject and drop, reject when you uh, reject a packet request, it sends an error message and a brief description. Uh, drop drops packets without any error messages. Uh, so typically you would want to reject packets uh, if you're troubleshooting and doing first time setup and drop packets on known source IPs that you wish to uh, block. The next section is services, which is how we set a uh, protocol and port set and give it a descriptive name. Uh, you can add a uh, service here by hitting the add button, giving it a short descriptive name. So let's say uh, HTTPS. This would be a TCP protocol and port 443. We'll hit save to uh, add it to the configuration. Uh, anytime you make a uh, change to a uh, firewall service or rule set, uh, it does take a, a bit longer than normal compared to other modules in Complete PBX5 to uh, update. And as we see here, the configuration has been applied. Let's go back to rules. Now we see here in the drop down box we have the HTTPS service that I created before. The last section is the whitelist. Uh, this allows you to set host IPs that completely ignore the firewall rule sets. So as we see here I have went ahead and whitelisted my laptop as uh, I am doing configuration on this particular system and I don't want to accidentally lock myself out due to rule changes or erroneous uh, typos. That concludes the firewall section. We'll now move to the intrusion detection, which is what I consider the other half of the firewall. As both of these work hand in hand to ensure security across the whole system. Uh, as we see here in intrusion detection, we have three sections of which the general section is the main section. Uh, we have enable or disable, um, and the logic that uh, dictates whether or not a user is banned and how long. So as we see here, we have the number of failed attempts allowed. Uh, we give them five chances over a period of 600 seconds or six minutes, and we will ban the host for 1,800 seconds. Uh, this will also send a notification email if specified in here. Uh, please note that in uh, one of the previous modules we went over the email settings and the notifications tab. If you have put in an email in the notifications tab for this particular section, it will be automatically populated for you. The next section is the ban list to show active ban hosts as we see here. Uh, this is a local laptop here that I tried to log into SSH with the wrong password. The last portion is the whitelist which as you see here the local host has been added but it's typically a good idea to add your local network uh, while you're uh, implementing the system so let's go ahead and add our local network here now the slash 24 is a part of the CIDR uh, numbering scheme which specifies subnets and uh, if you wish to add a full subnet here so what this means is that it's going to add uh, it's going to filter anything after this particular number or 
254 octets. So anything between 10.0.0.1 .0 .0 through 254 will be allowed. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now that changes have been updated and activated, we'll go ahead and uh, reload the configuration. And we now check the ban list and see that that particular IP has been removed from the ban list. And this is due because we whitelisted the whole subnet. Uh, we'll go ahead and do one other thing here real quick. Let's go ahead and remove that subnet there. And while we're waiting for this to update, uh, I have a Yealink phone here uh, that is registered to the account weak password. Uh, currently the password is actually password for this, but we're going to go ahead and change that password to be some random gibberish because I want the phone to get... Uh, oh, let's go ahead and log back in here. Because I want the phone to be banned. Okay, as we see here it's failed, but let's go ahead and enter some gibberish again just to make it try and register one more time. And as we see here, uh, we can see that this Yealink phone that I had attempted to register with the wrong password has been banned. Uh, in order to attempt to register the phone again, I will need to remove it from the ban list by clicking the trash can icon. Uh, but the phone will be banned again if it is not, one, set in the whitelist here, or two, has the correct password entered for it before we unban this device. So let's go ahead and enter the correct password, which uh, for our weak password extension is password. And as we see here, now the system has registered the device. So let's go ahead and refresh here. remove it from its jail. And while that's reloading, we'll go to the next module. So the next module is weak password detection. Uh, there's no additional subcategories uh, for it. And what this module does is displays any extensions uh, along with the device that's attached that the system believes has a weak password. Uh, in combination with the other two security sections, this allows you to have uh, very robust security on the system along with notifications letting you know, um, hey, some of these passwords on these particular extensions can be very easy to guess. So as we see here, for both of these extensions, I've entered weak passwords. Uh, of which, let's go ahead and change this to a stronger password for extension 2001. So let's go ahead and type 2001 here. As we see, we have extension 2001, which I've named weak password. And the password is password. So let's go ahead and change this to something less uh, weak. Click update. Now that we've updated the password, we'll go ahead and reload configuration. Now that the configuration has been reloaded, let's take a look at the weak passwords again. And as we see here, extension 2001 has dropped off the map. Uh, finally, one last thing, now that we've changed the password for the extension, let's go back to the Yealink phone and let's set its password so it's And it's registered now. Perfect. 
And finally, let's make a call. I have a soft phone here registered to extension 2000. We'll go ahead and reload the configuration. Let's call 2001. And as we see here, the call is completing. We'll go ahead and hang up. Thank you and have a nice day.